Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamer Dad channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about The Division 2. And for those of you who've been listening, who've been paying attention, you do know by now that they did delay the content that, or they announced, let's put it that way, they announced the delay of the content that's uh, that was actually promised for February of 2022. Now, in my last video, I talked about how the fact that they announced this delay and also delayed the PTS was a tactical error. I feel like they had the leeway to announce a delay for the content and also allow for the PTS to still remain as scheduled, which would have at least benefited both parties. Division agents would have been able to jump into the PTS and also be able to kind of start messing around that sandbox. And then eventually when they find out what it is that they want to basically do with the, you know, the rest of the content, they can eventually have, you know, their decisions made. They could have all of their ducks in a row and then eventually release that PTS has have happened over the course of multiple weeks. And I'm certain that when they did that, there was a set of PTSs that they did where they did like phase one, two, three or something thing like that. And each week they were rolling out changes in these test servers. And so I think that gave them a lot of time to continue what it is that they were working on in order for them to finish and then deliver. I think this may have been a scenario where they probably, uh, you know, had the opportunity to do that. Now, if that opportunity was not there, if that was not a possibility, I think they could have also kind of tracked the PTS as well and given it some sort of another concrete postponing and based off, oh, if they, okay, maybe we want to get out the content to you guys in potentially April. Well, guys, we moved the PTS from March, from, you know, from February to March, and we're going to run the PTS for a whole four weeks or six weeks so that you guys can start, you know, getting into what the, you know, gear game is and what the changes are going to look like. I think these lines of communication may have helped, but it's already been announced. I think they've already made the decision that they want to make. And so right now there really isn't much that we can do about it unless they backtrack and say, you know what, let's get the BTS out there anyway, so that you guys can see what we're working on at this stage. It's one of those things where, you know, there's nothing really hidden anymore, unless they want to continue with their Ubisoft uh, tradition, which is where they hold things very close to their chest. And it's very hard for, you know, division agents to know what is going on. So let's look at this from a few angles. There are other games that are going to be coming out in the next few months. There's also the possibility as well that we could have not gotten any news from the developers. And then by the time February was getting here, everything could have basically dropped on our lap and said, hey, we don't have the content ready. Give us a few more weeks or a few more months. And I think these possibilities are not outlandish. As much as I would chew massive out, which I did in my last video as to how they could have handled this better, I, in a sense, appreciate exactly what it is that they're actually doing, which is basically talking to us and telling us what's going on. Now, some of you know, I run another YouTube channel and there's another video game which has been announced. It got announced last year and we had a promise that it was going to be released this year and then it got moved to next year. The name of the game is Gotham Knights. It's from a Warner Brothers studio, Warner Brothers Games Montreal. I have to tell you, that studio is very poor at communicating with its audience. In fact, they make Massive look like monks and saints when it comes to communication with their community. And it's insane to think that there are other studios that will make Massive look good, but they are out there. And there are also multi-million dollar studios under multi-billion even dollar uh, publishers as well. And so this whole game of game development, I have to go back and kind of backtrack and say, OK, what's happening in the industry and how is that you know, comparable to what's going on? Now, you may say the standards may be that low, that massive is actually coming out on top. Whatever it is, your judgment is, it's all about perspective. So possibly if something like this were even presented in that community, say they were delaying the content a few more months, I can almost guarantee you that a lot of people in that community will probably appreciate it a lot more people than have in the division community. But I also get it. We got a one year delay. Well, truth is they also or the other community, which is a community I'm part of also got another one year delay. There's this trend of these delays that are constantly going on. And this is not the only game. There are many games that have suffered all of this. And I think this is the context that I tried to look at the division in, in order for me to be able to see, okay, let me see if I can have a fair and balanced opinion about what it is that I'm sharing. 
But again, I think one thing that we have to consider is what is the competition looking like? One of our audience members here, been an audience member forever, Moses said, you know, Ubisoft is not necessarily afraid of competition. They're going to be getting a whole bunch of, uh, you know, content for other, you know, games and they're going to be releasing other games as well, which is kind of true. They seem to be able to get themselves out there. Ubisoft is, is usually good at taking, you know, an idea, running with it, throwing it out there, not necessarily worried about how that's going to feel. They're already a big company, so their losses are not necessarily heavy hitters for them because they have other successes that can balance those things out. And so I had to go back and think about it and say, you know, a lot of the other games that are coming out in February, many of them are not even in the same genre as The Division. So it's not necessarily, according to some of you here in the audience, and you're making me think about this, a matter of the competition. I think it may be a matter truly of the resources, which is basically the first point that I highlighted that Ubisoft Bucharest being the studio working on this particular content is more than likely engaged in doing other content pieces, most especially the Ghost Recon Frontline game. Now, it's not been confirmed, but, you know, the developers and the publishers basically put out an announcement and said, hey, you know, we heard the audience feedback. And so we're indefinitely postponing the beta for this project, but they never said that they were canceling it. So which means, uh, you know, I guess you can just say, Ar uh, you know, uh, Occam's Razor, the simplest possible explanation or whatever it is that Ubisoft Bucharest is still developing that particular game. And I think that game may have a higher priority than the division. Another thing that was highlighted as well from our last discussion was Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Odyssey. Oh, my goodness, are getting new content. In fact, I saw the announcement today and I was like, man, I can't believe that these games are actually going to be getting content. And the division doesn't seem like it's getting any content. What could be going on in the pipeline? Well, I think Assassin's Creed right now is the game that, you know, is one of the more fresh titles that was released. Yes, it was released in November or so of 2020, right in the middle of everything that was going on. And those games that were able to come out in 2020 really enjoyed a lot of sales because people were home. People were just sitting playing games. And so Assassin's Creed Valhalla really benefited from that. And so the rest of the content pieces that are being dropped is something where I believe that the developers may have already had a huge plan ahead and are trying to use this as a springboard to whatever Assassin's Creed is going to be in the future. In our case, though, we didn't necessarily seem to, in the Division community, have that luxury. By the time the Division 1 was developed, its main creative director moved on to pick up another franchise, another development project based on Avatar. And then once the Division 2 was delivered, its creative director went on to pick up another major franchise and another development area, which is in Star Wars. So right now we're just asking the question currently, is Massive going to open up the conversation to let us know where they are in the Division? I know that the division is one of their babies. They're not going to put this franchise down. In fact, I, I I'll try my best to link to you guys a video that was actually done by David Polfelt. And he mentioned some of their main franchises that Massive Studio is responsible for. And the division was listed right there with Star Wars and Avatar. So it's not necessarily something where we're worried as to, you know, if it's a matter of when because the progress is very very important and another thing too is you know and this is just some of the thoughts from some of you here in the audience not necessarily mine but i think i agree is that most of the division agents will find themselves in a position where they return to play the game once the new content is delivered now some may not uh, but i know in my mind that I will be returning. I can speak for myself, but I know some of you here in the community, you agree with that sentiment. You know your division agents well enough to say that many will be coming back to play whenever the content is released. But in light of all of this, as much as Massive makes some of these mistakes, there are circumstances beyond control that even when you go back and look at things, you have to say, okay, at this rate, we're not getting anything. Well, what does it really matter? I mean, what does it really change in a sense? It's not like I have to play the content because my life depends on it. And at least they're communicating a little bit early, even though I would argue that 
they should have made sure that that PTS was a thing in order to make the communication or at least the response from the community slightly less. Uh, I don't know. I guess you could have just dampened all of the different the disappointment that you would have put, you know, in, that was packaged in that whole message better. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. All of this is really new and developing uh, at the moment, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Hopefully, the devs are able to kind of maybe just not stress themselves out too much. I mean, I would hate for somebody to go out there and be crunching to try to bring some new content. If it's time that they need, let them get the time. If the publisher is willing to pay the, uh, you know, the paychecks for the time frame, let the developers develop the content in good health and, you know, in a good frame of mind. I honestly don't want anybody to develop my content and be bitter after it or be bitter during development and then maybe he'll put some random bug in it. It's like the proverbial spitting in the burger type thing. I'll get out of your hair, guys. Talk to me in the comment section. Peace out.